We'll have some information on how you can better display your real self coming up. The internet has shaped much of our lives today. CSU EB welcomes prominent Stanford professor to campus to speak about this topic. Find out who next. Pioneer Web TV is starting now. Hello CSU East Bay, I'm Thomas Shellstreet. And I'm Brenna Lee James, and you are now tuning in to Pioneer Web TV, where we bring you the latest in campus news and event highlights. We'll be starting off the show tonight with a workshop on the world of henna. Following that is the Fake It campaign, examining how much of our true self we put forward. Finally, we'll be wrapping it all up with the silent library. This past Tuesday, CSU East Bay held its first job panel of the spring quarter. The panel was on careers in diversity and the global arena, pertaining to students and alumni who major in political science and foreign languages. The panel took place right here in the TV studio in the basement of the university library. Among the panelists were Edwin Okongo, a 2005 CSU East Bay graduate and a journalist for the Huffington Post alongside co-host of Africa Mix on KALW, Wahidi Fosli who graduated in 2001, was also on the panel and is now Senior Manager for Business Process Architecture at Oracle. Other panelists included Nicole Garrett and Godolfi Gonzalez. Industry job panels are a great opportunity to get some advice and exposure into fields of interest for CSU East Bay students. CSU East Bay hosted three job panels this past winter quarter, ranging from math, economics, and statistics, all the way to hospitality, recreation, and tourism. This was the last job panel of the academic year, according to ACE. Cal State East Bay is hosting the 10th annual Spring Speakers Program. This year's focus will be on the Internet. The Internet is the one invention that gives people access to an abundant amount of knowledge. Stanford graduate education professor Sam Weinberg will be speaking at this program. Weinberg studies include essays that offer rough maps of how ordinary people think about the past and use it to understand the present. Weinberg will be speaking on the historical thinking and civic responsibility, what is intelligence in a digital age. His teachings help tie into the future of learning. This event is free to the public. The professor will also speak about the current threat to historical veracity that the digital age poses on students, understanding the past. It will be hosted by the History Department on March 28th in the Library Biella Room. The Pioneer baseball team had its second strong season in a row this past season, finishing with a record of 30-18, including a 24-16 record in conference play. Last year, the team finished with a similar 32-18 record. The team had many standouts, including six members who earned all CCAA honors. Among them were Daniel Carney, Nick Hudson, Brandon Alexander, Ryan Cochin, Kelly Starnes, and Sean Becker. Starnes stood out as an offensive centerpiece on the team, also earning NCBWA All-West Region honors. Starnes bad 352, just one of the six categories he led the team in as a leadoff hitter. The Pioneers had an exceptionally strong finish to the season as they won seven of eight over a span where Cochin and Starnes won back-to-back -back Player of the Week awards. Welcome back to Pioneer Web TV, the best show for all the coverage of your campus news and events. Peer mentors from the Student Service Operation for Success hosted an event where students could come and receive henna tattoos. As a part of the Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month, SSOS students gave background information about how henna originated and its uses that are deeply rooted in the Indian and Middle Eastern culture. Reporter Raven Davis gave us a close look at this event. Let's see what she discovered. Well, this is uh, part of the, uh, I think this is the API month, which is the Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. 
and uh, uh, henna is uh, it's deeply rooted into the Indian and the Middle Eastern culture, and we felt like the, uh, Asian Asian is a very broad term, and uh, we felt like today we want to showcase one of our Indian culture. I just thought it would be cool because like mainly like the word tattoo, so I was like, oh, that'd be cool, you know, to get something. And so, and I know it wasn't um, like a commitment, it was just temporary, so I was like, yeah, it'd be fun to get. So I just thought I would do it. I got three turtles, like usually like, um, because uh, I'm part Hawaiian, so like turtles, like one represents my family, like my mom, my grandma, me. So it's just a representation of um, my family. SSOS stands for Student Service Operation for Success, and we are uh, we are part of the NFEZ grant, which specializes in providing uh, service, uh, academic support to students uh, who demonstrate academic need, but also of the Asian Pacific Islander uh, ethnicity. However, if students do not uh, meet those criteria, we, st they still are able to apply though. Thanks, Raven. It is great to hear the opinions of the SSOS leaders on their heritage. They felt as though the word Asian was too broad of a term, and it is great to hear their point of view on including Indian culture into API Heritage Month. Stick around, CSU East Bay. We'll be back after this quick break. When you don't read The Pioneer, you don't stay up to date on current issues. When you don't stay up to date on current issues, you have nothing to talk about with your friends. When you have nothing to talk about with your friends, your friends stop being your friends. When your friends stop being your friends, you get lonely. And when you get lonely, you create imaginary friends. Don't create imaginary friends. Read The Pioneer. A new issue comes out on every Thursday. Welcome back CSU East Bay, I'm Tom Michelle Story. And I'm Brenna Lee James. Welcome back to Pioneer Web TV, the best online source for your campus news. People walk through life often not showing their real emotions. The Cal State East Bay's Christian Fellowship put on an event this past Tuesday promoting people being real with themselves. Sarah Kerr, the chair of the Christian Fellowship, put on the event. This is Stefan Frost reporting to you from California State University East Bay. I am here on campus with the Cal State East Bay Christian Fellowship as they ask students how do they fake it walking through life. Cal State East Bay Christian Fellowship held their very first fake it campaign. I had a chance to speak with the chair of the program to see where she came up with the idea. Hi, I'm Sarah Kerr and I'm here with InterVarsity Christian Fellowship and today we are taking part in our Fake It campaign. Um, basically what we're doing is we're asking people on campus how they fake it in their personal lives and how they fake it on campus around their friends and with family and at church. So our purpose in doing this is trying to connect um, how we fake it and how God wants us to be real with Him in order to establish a good relationship with Him. So yeah. Brittany Rose Phillips, who is a senior at Cal State East Bay, shared some of her enlightenment on how she feels about faking it. So do you feel like you fake your faith? I feel like sometimes it feels like I do. Like, for example, when I'm at church and I've been sad all day and I'm moody, I feel like going to church is like going through emotion. Like I'm there just because people say I need to be there rather than I'm there because I want to be there. And to me, that makes me feel like I'm faking it, or not that I'm faking it like my relationship with God, which is what my faith is, but that I'm faking the emotions of going to church and faking what society says I need to do. Saul, who is a graduate student here at Cal State East Bay, shared his experience with participating in the faking campaign. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I mean, I was just walking by, and then somebody told me something about faking. And I was like, okay, what's going to go happen? But, I mean, I think it's a pretty good idea. Never be afraid to share your true emotions. Always speak your mind and let others know how you feel. This has been Stefan Frost reporting to you from California State University East Bay, Pioneer Web TV News. Thanks, Stefan. Being true to ourselves is something we can all use a little bit more of. Silent Library is an American version of a popular Japanese game show. This show has contestants do extreme challenges in a library while trying to be completely silent. CSU East Bay had their own silent library. Reporter Beatrice Moreno went out to see how quiet students could be. ASI's annual silent library event is based after the MTV hit game show where teams compete against each other to complete challenging tasks. 
while sustaining total silence. This is from like based on the TV show um, from MTV, mm -hmm. the sound library that they have. Usually a shot in the library and the goal is to be quiet while you're doing different kinds of activities such as eating things, getting hit with things, doing silly activities. This year's event was hosted and coordinated by ASI Presents' very own Lapika Thomas. From fraternity brothers to roommates and club organizations, this event brought together student groups for the purpose of unity, entertainment, and of course, cash prizes. The game consisted of several challenges. First one being the Banana Sprite Challenge, where singled out participants had to eat two bananas and drink a cup of Sprite. Third challenge consisted of a teammate digging for four objects, head first in a tub of pudding. Set, go. Objects later turned out to be a pair of underwear, an two, onion, a piece one, of cheese, and a dirty old sock. The fourth challenge involved the participants to drink a cup of dish rag water. The rag was soaked from a bucket of water waste and wrung into a cup for participants to drink. This left many of the participants unable to keep down the contents of the challenge and running for the restroom. The fifth challenge was to consume an assorted seafood sandwich that left many nauseous and gaggy. The sixth challenge was a group effort, where three out of four teammates would simultaneously start from a single bowl a mixture of different condiments. Finally, the last challenge was a balloon pop where one teammate sat on each teammate's lap trying to pop balloons within a given time limit. The event's winners were Team 4, the Poly Club Boys. They accepted their victory with much excitement. My hands smell like crap, but it's okay because we won. <laughs> Thanks, Beatrice. CSU East Bay has more upcoming events like these hosted by the ASI Marketing Department. It is great to see that the library can be a place for studying, reading, and games. Don't move, East Bay. Pioneer Web TV will be right back with more campus news after this short break. In between classes, need a snack? We got you. Coupon and try a small bag for free at the bookstore. Curtis Jammin' Kettle Corn. One taste and you know you're hooked. That's it for today, CSU East Bay. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching, Pioneers. I am Vernelli James. Be sure to tune in next week for the latest campus news.